My day job is a gift. I have the honor to mentor and coach in a college setting future social workers. Two of the main core courses we have in our curriculum are policy and communities. If you want to see change from your community to a US federal policy level, that process takes about 20 years. So you have to be committed. Today, I just want to talk to you a little bit about how to keep moving when that change of a system takes time and process. One of the ways to create change is to have dialogue with someone different than us, someone who doesn't look like us, talk like us, move like us, someone different. So I want to tell you the story of, this is not Joe, but I'm going to call him Joe. I met Joe in Minneapolis. He was a refugee from Africa. He helped PBS create a documentary on government change in his home community. That change happened about eight months after he completed the documentary. He was an English translator, and he knew that when the government shifted, he'd better not be home. So he went down to his capital city and worked to get papers for himself and his three children, one of which was three months old. After three or four days down in the capital city, he received a phone call from a neighbor who said, do not come home. I have your children in my home. Your wife and mother-in-law have been arrested. At that point, Joe took his paperwork that he had. He called the PBS producer and said, will you help me come to America? I'm in trouble. An individual from the production agreed to bring him over as a refugee. He fled his home country, his family, not knowing what, what was going to happen to them, his children. And for a year and a half, he lived in Minneapolis in an apartment with very little furniture. He did not have the right clothes or an understanding of what winter would be like. He didn't understand the processes of, of how we buy food. It's different from where he came from. It was all new. Joe spent a year and a half in America before he felt safe. And do you know what made him feel safe? He told me, and this is the part of the story that sticks most with me, he told me that it took a smile from a stranger on the street who made eye contact with him and smiled at him. And he said, that's the first time I ever felt safe in that year and a half. It would be four more years before Joe would be able to hug and be with his family again. Why did the smile mean so much? How can one smile, one eye contact, or the eye contact between two individuals make a difference? And the answer is mirror neurons. Luckily, I have it in my notes. <laughs> And so you may not know what mirror neurons are. They were discovered in the early 90s by a, an Italian scientist who decided to put some of those electrodes you saw earlier on a monkey's brain, and then very rudely did not give the monkey a banana, but allowed that monkey to watch another monkey peel and open the banana, and then eat the banana in front of that monkey. The monkey who did not have the banana had the parts of his brain light up as if he was peeling and eating the banana. Those are mirror neurons. They're in the front part of our brains as humans, and they are part of what make us humans. How many of you have ever gone to a movie and cried, or gotten angry, or felt, or felt resolve at the end? Why did you? Because all you did was see something that you were not a part of, that you weren't in, and yet it affected you. That's called empathy. That's also mirror neurons. That's why they exist. Because we are a social human creature who needs that connection with someone, something, a group of people. So when we see somebody do something, the mirror neurons send a message to our motor system that then creates a behavior within us. So you may not believe me, 
I'm going to ask you to try something. Right now, your blood needs to move from your back and your bum to the rest of your body. So would you mind standing up and look at someone you either don't know or know, which covers anyone in this room. <laughs> and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you get inside their head, OK? It's, it's a little activity we both get to do simultaneously. I'm going to um, scowl with you. And it helps me to think of my partner when driving down a taxpayer road and somebody pulls out in front of them, they make this very face. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you to please scowl with me. Make a face, tense up the muscles, do it, do it, do it. Now turn to the person you're with and make that face at them. Do it. Mm. <laughs> All right. It was hard, yes, it's uncomfortable. What that did was turn on your mirror neurons. So when you saw that, what did you feel? Humor. You wanted to release the tension immediately because this was not a place to be in front of my, par 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 my partner driving down the road. So what happened is your mirror neurons turned on, and you may have had a response of backing up, wanting to turn away, or somebody might want to step up, right? So let's go ahead and try that with a smile. This involves relaxing the face and the body. And now turn to your partner and smile. <laughs> you are all excellent scientific subjects. Go ahead and sit down. Thank you. So what you experienced there was mirror neurons wanting to return that same feeling, that same behavior. And I'm telling you that that's what sociologists love. They say if you want to live in a community that you want to create, and to make it past that 20-year mark, you have to turn on other people's mirror neurons. You have to get inside their head to make the change. So don't stop the behavior. Don't stop creating the community you want. Don't ever, ever give up if you know it's the right thing to do. Because you need to, you need to encourage humanness. We need to encourage human rights. We gotta stop ignoring people. Stop being afraid of the homeless. They exist, they're here. Start looking at them. Listen to their story. Don't ignore it. Don't group them together. Don't group us together. Look at us as individuals because we each, every single one of you and me, we have our own thoughts, our own desires of what this life should be like for us or what we want. We're individuals, we are not groupings. Do make eye contact, do smile. It made a difference to Joe, it made him feel safe. You'll never know the difference you make when you're creating the community you want to keep. Thank you. Woo! <laughs>